Have you ever stumbled upon a classic film from the late 1920s that still manages to captivate audiences today? It's intriguing to discover how old movies can still resonate with modern viewers, isn't it? Well, let's delve into one such timeless gem. This particular film tells the tale of royalty and romance, a story where a queen finds herself drawn to a man who doesn't hold a royal title. Quite unconventional for its time, wouldn't you say? This unlikely love story unfolds amidst a backdrop of humor and heartache, showcasing the complexities of forbidden love. Reflecting on my initial viewing of this cinematic masterpiece, I was struck by its portrayal of love transcending societal norms. Despite the passage of decades, the themes explored in this movie remain relevant, reminding us that matters of the heart are timeless. So, have you ever experienced the charm of this classic film? What memories or anecdotes do you associate with it? Share your thoughts and stories below. Keep reading as we uncover some fascinating trivia about this beloved classic. 80 years have passed since its release, yet the charm of this classic film endures. It was a milestone for its director's first venture into sound cinema. The story revolves around a young queen who must find a suitable husband, despite the disapproval of his romantic antics. The musical score, with its memorable tunes, complements the grand boulevardier style of the lead actor. Despite its acclaim, the film didn't secure any Oscar wins, but its restrained performances remain noteworthy. The mastery of sound in this movie ensures its enduring appeal to audiences. Among the 400 movies nominated for America's Greatest Love Stories, The Love Parade stands out. It holds the distinction of being the first film to receive at least six Academy Award nominations. Originally part of Paramount's extensive catalog, the film found a new audience when it made its television debut in 1960. Since then, it has been restored and released on DVD as part of the Lubitsch Musicals collection. Viewers can still catch occasional screenings on Turner Classic Movies. The Love Parade, a 1929 movie, features interesting connections with other Hollywood personalities. Lillian Roth, initially cast for a role in Neil Simon's The Prisoner of Second Avenue, was replaced during rehearsals. Meanwhile, Jean Harlow, idolized by Marilyn Monroe, had Monroe back out of a biographical picture on her life, expressing concern over potential misrepresentation. Notably, both Harlow and Monroe starred in their final films alongside Clark Gable. Additionally, the novel Wonder Boys by Michael Chabon features a character who uses the film's title for his semi-autobiographical novel. The title remains unchanged in the film adaptation, though the reasoning is not provided. Such connections enrich the legacy of the love parade in Hollywood lore. Virginia Bruce was among the 20 original The Goldwyn Girls, sharing the spotlight with notable names like Betty Grable, Paulette Goddard, and Anne Southern. As for Jean Harlow, a poignant detail emerged about her final days. A photograph captured her clutching a copy of Gone with the Wind, a testament to her determination to read it. Despite her illness, she couldn't progress past the first few pages. Even as she lay in the hospital, she insisted that the book be packed, though a nurse remarked she would never finish it. Harlow's engagement to actor William Powell was another chapter cut short. Though engaged for two years, their plans to marry were thwarted by her untimely passing, leaving their love story tragically incomplete. In 1929, a remarkable movie was made, showcasing the cooking skills of Eugene Paulette. During the filming of The Adventures of Robin Hood, Paulette cooked big meals for the cast, just like the one seen in the movie. Later, in 1954, Maurice Chevalier recorded a famous French song called Du Amoureux sur un Bank. He also sang an English version called A Boy and a Girl on a TV show in 1956, showing how versatile he was as a performer. Jeanette MacDonald, who was also in the movie, was part of four Oscar-nominated films during her career, including The Love Parade in 1929, showing she was a big deal in movies during that time. These stories give us a peek into the lives of the people who made the movie special, helping us understand the human side of what happened behind the scenes. When first offered the part, Maurice Chevalier claimed that an actor of his humble background would never be capable of playing a royal courtier and had to be persuaded by director Ernst Lubitsch. Assuming its copyright has not lapsed already, this film and all others produced in 1929 enter the U.S. public domain in 2025. Virginia Bruce portrayed soprano Jenny Lind in The Mighty Barnum and a character loosely based on Florence Ziegfeld Jr.'s Mistress Lillian Lorraine in The Great Ziegfeld. In 1929, a memorable movie stood out in the world of cinema with its mix of romance and humor. This film earned praise not only for its interesting story but also for its impressive set design. Despite doubts from Morris Chevalier, the main actor, director Ernst Lubitsch convinced him to play a prince, 
a role Chevalier initially thought he couldn't handle because of his humble background. It's worth noting that director Robin Mamoulian later showed his support for Chevalier's career by writing the introduction for a book dedicated to the actor's work and accomplishments. These behind-the-scenes stories reveal the teamwork that brought the love parade to the big screen, making it a memorable movie in its era. A new musical titled In Hell with Harlow was planned, depicting an imagined encounter between Jean Harlow and Protestant World War II martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Although written by Paul L. Williams, the production never made it to the stage. It was set to feature Don Wynarski and Greg Corin in leading roles. Jeanette MacDonald debuted in Grand Opera at His Majesty's Theatre in Montreal, Canada in May 1943. Her portrayal of Juliet in Romeo and Juliet marked a significant milestone in her career. Ben Turpin, known for his distinct appearance, commanded a flat fee of $1,000 per appearance, regardless of the role's significance. His memorable cameos included Paramount's Million Dollar Legs in 1932. Turpin's final film appearance was in Warner Brothers' Keystone Hotel in 1935, a reunion of silent era comedians. Universally praised by critics, a particular film has achieved a rare feat on Rotten Tomatoes with a flawless score, drawing from reviews by six critics. Directed by Ernst Lubitsch, the director's inaugural foray into sound cinema showcases his adaptability to new technologies. The lead actress, Jeanette MacDonald, was celebrated for her contributions during the TCM Summer Under the Stars event in August 2018. Her performance in the production added depth and charm, contributing to its timeless appeal. This cinematic masterpiece seamlessly integrates music and storytelling, captivating audiences and securing its place in history. Lubitsch's innovative approach and McDonald's captivating presence ensure the film's status as a beloved classic for generations to come. This enduring acclaim stands as a tribute to the brilliance of this cinematic gem. A groundbreaking film changed the way movies were made by introducing a new method for recording sound. Directed by Ernst Lubitsch, it used a special technique where actors would act without speaking, and then their voices were added later. This approach was unique at the time. The success of the film wasn't just because of this technique, though. The actors, Morris Chevalier and Jean Harlow, gave outstanding performances that kept audiences hooked. Chevalier, who had appeared in many great films, and Harlow, famous for her roles with Clark Gable, worked together to create something special. Their performances made the film unforgettable. It's a significant moment in the history of movies because it changed how sound was used in films from then on. 